Prime Minister Davis revealing the truth while presenting the government's supplementary budget with the official opposition firing back, and yet another protest against PMH's maternity ward. Good evening everyone, I'm Tyler Simonet with your JCN News for this Wednesday, October 27th. Thanks for staying with us. A stark difference between how the figures stacked up between the Minnesota administration's pre-election fiscal report and reality. Prime Minister Philip Davis revealing as much in the House of Assembly this morning. With the details, we go to our Leah Cooper. There's a $1 billion difference between numbers provided by the Minnesota administration's pre-election economic and fiscal report and the truth, according to Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Philip Davis, who revealed as much while presenting his government's 2021-2022 supplementary budget in the first official session of the House of Assembly under the new PLP administration Wednesday morning. Upon coming to office, the Prime Minister says he requested a full accounting of the government's fiscal position to this end, he says a renowned accounting firm has been reviewing information provided by the Ministry of Finance with respect to liabilities of the government as of the 30th of September 2021. That's approximately one month following the issuance of the pre-election report. It is painfully clear that the pre-election report was an incomplete presentation of the government's contingent and real liabilities. For example, it excluded over $100 million of contracts executed by the Ministry of Works, for which no funding has been provided in the budget. It omits underfunding of pension and gratuity payments for public officers, which is now being addressed in the supplementary budget. Prime Minister Davis adds that the pre-election report also omits a loan assumed by the government for which the only source of payment was Bahamas Power and Light, an entity he describes as already having significant financial challenges. The report excludes amounts owing for taxes for a star witness in a criminal case of a former cabinet minister. This is, this is a very unusual arrangement, which is supported by a promissory note signed by a senior official of the Ministry of Finance. The Prime Minister also notes that the report also excludes court judgments made against the government, for which funding now has to be provided in this supplemental budget. He adds that it makes no mention of potential liabilities emanating from contract breaches committed by the former administration. And once he has the final report, it will be presented in the House of Assembly. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Leah Cooper. Meantime, the Prime Minister also announcing economic plans that should help the country rebound. According to the PM, an increased focus on revenue and tax collection is a big part of the economic recovery. Drino Saunders has more. During his budget statement on the first sitting of the new parliament, Prime Minister Philip Davis saying his administration will focus heavily on revamping and making the government's revenue collection system more efficient. Mr. Davis announced the appointment of a new revenue policy committee made up of experts, including the controller of Inland Revenue and Customs, who he says understand the challenges of revenue collection and policy, and not made up of politicians and political appointees. It will be made up of, ex of experts who understand the challenges of revenue collection and revenue policy, including the financial secretary, the control of Inland, inland Revenue, the control of Customs, and representatives from other agencies. This committee will be tasked with reviewing and providing recommendations on areas of revenue leakage, adjustments, and other areas where government revenues can be improved. Mr. Davis says it is clear the government must have access to adequate financial resources if it is to successfully pursue a blueprint for change and growth. He says Wednesday's budget statement lays the foundation for a more fair and equitable system of taxation that also addresses leakage and tax fraud beginning immediately. Mr. Davis believes tens of millions of dollars otherwise lost will now be collected. The path to restoring our fiscal health begins today. It begins today with the re-establishment of a fully resourced revenue enhancement unit whose purpose 
is to increase the tax base yes. by minimizing tax avoidance and fraud. Yes. Within 24 months, we expect that this unit will account for $200 million in additional tax. The Prime Minister also set a revenue to GDP target for his administration over the next five years. We are announcing the objective of achieving a revenue to GDP target ratio of 25% by the end of our first term in office. At the time of the mid-year budget, we will present further details of our tax adjustment strategies, which will be implemented in, in upcoming fiscal cycles. Mr. Davis says his government will be more aggressive in taking advantage of the global economic recovery and more buoyant growth in our own economy to develop an overdue, full-fledged reform plan for the country's tax system. Jerino Saunders for JCN News. The Prime Minister, while presenting his 2021-2022 supplementary, also says it reprioritizes unnecessary budgeted expenditures to areas where they are most needed, restores fiscal health of the country over the medium term, and ensures that government continues to respond to the needs of the most vulnerable in society. Over the past 17 months, the country has been in the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic, a global challenge. Sticking with his party's blueprint for change, touted during election campaigning, the PM says the government's first priority is to lead the way out of crisis, adding that a turnaround for the country's COVID response is long overdue while noting that policy missteps have led to tragedy and have slowed the country's economic recovery. That said, Prime Minister Davis announced that come December 1st, 2021, there will be an increase in public service pension payments. For the 742 persons receiving less than $500 per month in monthly pension, they receive an increase of $100. For the 2,000, and 12 persons receiving more than $500, but less than $1,000 in monthly pension, they will receive a monthly increase of $75. And for the 4,432 persons receiving a monthly pension of greater than $1,000, they will receive a monthly adjustment of $50. Madam Speaker, the annual cost annual cost of this adjustment is $6.4 million. This group includes retired teachers, nurses, doctors, police officers, corrections officers, and retired clerical and administrative staff, whom PM Davis says received no cost of living adjustments, and many of them have a combined income of less than $500 per month. The increase in pension, however, does not include pensions for former politicians or senators, former judges or holders of the office of the Governor General or their living spouses. As for increments for pay to rank and file public officers, the Prime Minister says that will also be reinstated this fiscal year. The increments, which are nominal adjustments in earnings for the majority of public officers of no more than $700 per year, were withheld by the previous government, even as lavish public contracts were awarded to family members of, of cabinet ministers. This inequity is now being addressed. Effective date. Effective. So, honourable members, take your seat. Take your seat, honourable member for Central Grand Bahama. The effective date for the increment reinstatement is July 2021. Members, honorable members, please. This inequity is now being addressed. The effective date for the increment reinstatement is July 2021. And the payment date is January 2022. This, I, I don't say nothing, I don't come back up. Uh, don't, don't come after me. This reinstatement, which will cost $8 million this year, is being funded from the increase in revenue over forecast experienced in the first quarter of this fiscal year. Arrears will be paid once additional savings have been identified. 
Now, the Prime Minister did not stop there. He also made a promise to those still receiving unemployment benefits, a direct result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Davis noting that many of them, after a year and a half, are still trying to stretch the $100 per week given to pay their bills and feed and support their families. He's making a way for them to have a good Christmas. Last Christmas, I spent time in communities in New Providence and the Family Islands, including my own constituency of Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. I spoke with many Bahamians what little means to celebrate and whose suffering was evident. This Christmas will not be the same for every person currently receiving $100 per week from the COVID Unemployment Assistance Program. We will provide to them a $500 lump sum payment this Christmas. We say to them, we say to them, there's no way to alleviate entirely the suffering that they would have experienced over the past 18 months. But the hope is that this payment can mark the beginning of a new, more hopeful time for them. According to the Prime Minister, more than 17,000 Bahamians are currently receiving COVID-19 employment benefit assistance administered by the National Insurance Board. Well, the official opposition demanding answers following the supplementary budget estimates of revenue and expenditure delivered in the House of Assembly this morning, particularly on the government's plans to reduce value-added tax. Opposition members met with the press in the minority in the House of Assembly following Prime Minister Davis's presentation. Here's Lorenzo Smith with the opposition's reaction to the budget. That was a very reckless and dangerous statement made by the Prime Minister without providing the evidence. I'm certain that the entire Bahamian populace are waiting for the evidence. He basically said that we have hidden one billion dollars in such a short space of time. That is a reckless and dangerous statement and he must provide such evidence as the debate proceeds. That's the leader of the opposition, Dr. Hubert Minis, responding to Prime Minister Philip Davis' claims on Wednesday during his supplementary budget draft estimate of revenues and expenditures communication that there is a $1 billion difference between the numbers shown in the Minnesota led administration pre-election economic and fiscal report. Member of Parliament for East Grand Bahama and former Minister of State for Finance, Kwesi Thompson, also weighing in on the PM's communication, calling it a political reddit speech. He was very clear that the former government was in accordance with the law for the fiscal report. There are about 10 items that the act specifically says has to be included in there. The same technical persons who uh, assisted and put together the report, the same technical persons who are in the Ministry of Finance today. And so uh, it complied with what the law said it should comply with. On the campaign trail, the government promised to reduce value-added tax to 10%. The Prime Minister on Wednesday reassured that promise. Mr. Thompson is calling on the davis Cooper administration to answer this question. What they have said is that they will decrease VAT, but what they have not said is that for all of those items that were previously zero rated, it will actually increase by 10%. And so the cost of food will go up. And the cost of all of those other items that were previously zero rated will go up by 10%. That was nowhere near and included in any statement made previously or today. Insert, insert, insert. The East Grand Bahama MP is calling on the government to come clean and tell the whole truth and adding that the opposition will not just listen to what they have to say, but they will also watch what they do. I'm Laurencia Smith for JCN News. A second day of protesting for the returning of the fundamental rights back to women organization who is demanding better birthing facilities for the Princess Margaret Hospital's maternity ward. 
This as multiple reports surface of newborn babies and sometimes mothers losing their lives as a result of negligence by hospital staff. Here's organization founder Patrice Hannah Carey. We expected Dr. The Honorable Michael Davel to address our concerns and because there was no public address, we are here today to show that we will not stand, it will not go away and he must, must address it as they reconvene as they go now into the house. Now, as I said yesterday, I received on the hotline that we have going for mothers that go to do such things, a call. Okay, and on that call I learned that um, a mother carrying twins lost one. And so um, due to respect for the family, I will keep those names private, but at the same time, how is this now another life lost in the same way on the same what are we we demand results prime minister philip davis has since reassured protesters that their matter will be dealt with and health minister dr michael darvel also announced that a full investigation will take place into these matters and its findings will be made public the findings will be made public and all the necessary steps will follow i have been appraised of the shortfalls in terms of resources at the hospital and to intend to do my best to meet these challenges but will not condone neglect of those persons entrusted in our care. But I must say for the record that the former Progressive Liberal Party administration saw the critical need and in 2016 the Public Hospital Authority signed a 15 million dollar contract with Guaranteed Construction Limited for work to be carried out at our maternity ward, our male surgical ward, our legacy entrance at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Dr. Darwell added that with the last PLP administration departure from office, the contract was never executed. It is not sufficient reassurance to make me stop advocating or speaking out, but reassurance as if they knew about the problem, they are aware, they are, um, it's actually on the table now and I can look forward along with the Bahamian public to resolve in short order. I'm expecting an announcement, but I can say to you in the brave style, um, it was very soothing and coming. And I felt as if um, this man wants to help. And so I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I will say to PMH, watch out, watch out. Because Saturday was a protest and now today, just yesterday, there was another death. I will say to you, watch out. We're coming for you, PMH. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.